Hey everybody, in this tutorial we're going to be talking about the shader options you have when importing your character, your character creator 3 character, into Unreal Engine 4 using the Auto Setup plugin. Okay, so we're going to talk about the different types of shaders and kind of go into a bit more detail on uh, the differences between them. Okay, so uh, if you have your character in, generally it should uh, do this automatically, but if you have your character in and you want to uh, use the Auto Setup plugin, just select your character, uh, the FBX file from the uh, whatever folder you're in, and go up to CC Setup. So we're going to be talking about the standard shader first, okay? Now I've imported this character already in using the high quality shader, which contains the, the lightweight, the LW lightweight, and the standard shader uh, as well. Uh, but I'm just going to go through all these uh, one by one here. So generally, the standard shader you're going to be use you're going to be use that for you know far away type of characters that don't really need to see much detail, like NPCs. Um, it just saves a lot of resources. It's a lot less uh, resource heavy. Let's take a look at an example of some of the parameters that you can use here. You can see these. This is the standard shader right here. We have all the base uh, color stuff, all the roughness multipliers. And you can see we have uh, roughness multiplier, base color multiplier, and specular multiplier that we can use to adjust the values to refine those and make it look uh, a little bit more realistic. And you can see standard shaders here are used for, you know, generally far away. Um, if you have a few characters in the scene, you don't need to pay any much attention to a single one of them. Go ahead and use the standard shader. And you can find the standard shader if you go down under CC shaders here, you'll find a standard shader right here. And you can just double click on the material and take a look at the material graph for the standard shader. Not really too complex compared to the uh, lightweight and the high quality one. We'll talk about those a little bit later. Okay, but just uh, this is the material graph that you can use. So let's close that down. Let's take a look at the lightweight shader now. So for the lightweight shader, I'm just going to show you this image here. We have a few different parameters we can use for the lightweight shader. This includes the normal intensity, the uh, roughness intensity, and the scale as well, uh, detail scale. You can see here if we uh, modify those, we can get a much more refined uh, look on our character. Now this is used for not really for detailed shots, but more for uh, you know mid-range kind of shots. Um, it contains uh, mask textures for use of uh, subsurface scattering. You can see an example here, just kind of lightweight shader, just for a kind of a one-person shot maybe, but you don't have to pay attention to the small details on their face. Um, that's what lightweight shaders are uh, commonly used for. And you can find that under uh, CC shaders, under uh, skin shader here, and under skin shader, under textures, you'll find 03, uh, rather since the skin shader right here, you'll find uh, the RL uh, underscore lightweight skin. You can just double click on that and take a look at the uh, standard hierarchy here. Um, this is the material graph for the lightweight shader. A little bit more complex than the standard shader, but again, um, you know, not as complex as the high quality shader, which we're going to explore right now. And again, if you want to, uh, you know, uh, add that to your character or import your character with a lightweight shader, what you would do is you would go, go to your character, uh, wherever he is here, um, in RL content. And we have a dude there. And you, would, of course, go up to CC setup and you would choose lightweight shader. Now we're going to talk about uh, high quality shader here. Now this is used for when your character is, when you're doing close-ups of your character, you want to, you know, uh, tweak and refine little areas of your character. You can use the subsurface scattering masks. Let's take a look at an image uh, for this. So the high quality shader includes a lot of different stuff, um, mapping for, or rather masking for the roughness. So you can mask out the cheek and the chin and the ear, like individually. And you can see here, you can uh, really adjust those and, and refine the look of your character, depending on your lighting and depending on your scenario. And of course, your character's uh, state that you, that you want him to be in, whether it's he's sweaty or is it like oily nose or something like that. You can go into a lot more detail. You can see here the, uh, the ears and the neck as well. Um, everything from, um, there's also a micro roughness uh, scale, which we'll talk about a little bit later on. Um, you can even modify the inner eyelid and mouth and uh, nose and upper eyelid, eyelid and stuff like that. And uh, you can see it's used for, you know, very close up type uh, scenarios where you want to really focus on the, uh, the details of your character's face. And if we want to take a look at the high quality material graph, we can just select our character and go down to uh, the skin head material here. And at the bottom, there should be a section for, uh, for general here. Let's just uh, open that up. You can find your RL high quality skin shader right here. This is the material graph. Um, as you can see, uh, if we zoom out a little bit here, a bit more complex than the other two we were looking at. Okay, so we've done all this work to uh, uh, help you guys um, get the maximum, the best, uh, most visually appealing result uh, for your characters with a single click uh, using the auto setup plugin. Uh, you don't have to do all this stuff. We'll take care of it uh, with the auto setup plugin. Okay, so really useful and a uh, quick little tip there.
Now this image here shows which parts of the character use the lightweight and high quality shader uh, automatically if you uh, import in with high quality. Uh, certain parts of the character like the clothing and accessories and if you're using Insta LOD, they're not going to assign a high quality or low, uh, lightweight shader to it. Okay, it's just going to be standard shader. You don't really need much detail on, on that. Uh, if you're focusing on the character, uh, generally the skin is and the, and the face are the most important area that you want to have high quality shaders on. So you can use this image as a reference. Okay, now let's take a quick look at the head shader parameters by going into the head material on the character, uh, just down here. Now the first thing to note is at the very top, you'll have this checkbox for is head, okay? This means there's going to be a lot more settings than all the other uh, materials. So when you have is head checked, that means it's going to be the character's head. So is head will have a few more settings than the body, arms, and legs. Okay, so the first thing we're going to take a look at down here is the uh, subsurface scattering. Um, it's right down here below the uh, ORM map, okay, so the SSS cavity map. Uh, you can quickly uh, load that up and see the different channels, uh, what data is on all the different channels there. Okay, um, the blue one right here, uh, green and uh, red, you can take a look at those separately on your own time. Uh, but they have a couple of important values here. Uh, the first one is the thick scatter uh, scale right here. We'll just move that over a little bit so you can see it. Uh, thick scatter scale. If you uh, select that, let's just uh, deselect our character there. You can adjust that thick scatter scale, and you'll notice, uh, particularly on areas like the like the nose here and the ear, for example, like right around the nose area here, you'll notice that value change. It'll become a lot softer if, if we have a higher value. You'll get kind of a softer look. Let's just uh, zoom in a little bit closer. All right. Um, so if you take that down to zero, you'll notice a bit uh, a bit more uh, of uh, kind of ambient occlusion type effect and this uh, higher value will increase it and soften it. You can use like a higher value like 5 um, or a value like maybe negative 5 and you'll see the, the real strong result right there uh, once you get a negative value. And the same thing kind of goes for the uh, the thin scatter scale. Okay, it's so the thin scatter scale. A little bit less noticeable um, unless you use like a, uh, like a negative 5 value again like this. Um, you'll see the result. A positive 5 value will be a lot softer. The thin scatter scale is kind of for areas of, of the skin that's a little bit thinner, like around the edges of the nose there. Um, in particular, in this uh, example, you can notice that a lot better, a lot more um, on this area right here. Uh, you know, negative 2 even as an example, uh, just around the eyes here as well. And change that, uh, compare that with like a value of 2. And there's your the uh, subsurface scattering effect, which makes it a lot softer and more realistic on the skin. We'll just reset that back to its original value there. And there's also the mouth scatter scale. So this will be focused on the lips of the character. Um, if we just uh, uh, click that a little bit, you can see if we take that down to zero, the lips will seem a bit more parched and a bit uh, a bit drier, a bit rougher. Um, however, if we take that value up to like a value of one or even a three, you'll get a much softer, uh, smoother look, uh, much more realistic as if it's uh, like a, a real lip texture. Um, that's semi-transparent, okay, and you get the light scattering through it and, and uh, all that stuff. We'll just take that back down to uh, the original value as well. Let's take a look now at the micro normal mask as well. Uh, the micro normal mask is a, a unique one with this new high quality shader as well. So uh, we can go up here to, uh, where is it? There you go, our micro normal mask. Just double click that and you can see it uh, loaded up right there. That's the uh, mask for the micro normal, okay. And what you can do is you can adjust the values here as well, um, such as the micro normal strength and the micro normal tiling value. Okay, let's take a look at what that does. Uh, if we enable both of those, if we increase the strength, for example, you can see, uh, especially on the nose, uh, for example, like a lot more uh, porous detail there. The pores seem a bit stronger. They come out a lot stronger. Um, if we take the tiling value down, uh, you can see a much more uh, noticeable result here. Um, I can even just uh, you know pan around on my character a little bit to see the other side here. Um, uh, the forehead is fairly noticeable right here, um, but uh, this side you can really notice um, a lot of the pores uh, with that tiling value. So generally, you want to keep that tiling value value fairly refined. Okay, nothing too crazy. We can even just reset it back to uh, 32 and reset our micro normal strength to something lower. Again, it really depends on how smooth or how texturized you want your skin to be, and uh, those details will show up. And let's take a look at the roughness map because the high quality shader has a lot, a lot of parameters you can mess around with for roughness here. Um, and you can you can see all the masking maps right here for different areas uh, for the ear and neck, cheeks and forehead, and roughness. You can activate all these and you can modify them uh, one by one as well. Let's take a little bit of a 
different uh, perspective on our character there. We don't go into his face there too much. Um, so let's take a look first at something like the, uh, the edge, for example, edge roughness value. Um, take a look at the edge right there of the character's chin, kind of around the, the hair area right here. That's going to be uh, where the head uh, or the edge uh, multiplier value will affect, okay? And you can adjust that to whatever you want. I'm just going to change it to something like, uh, I don't know, let's go like 0 0.05 uh, or 0 0.5 here. There you go. And your roughness scale as well is one you want to uh, make sure you modify. So the micro roughness scale, again, that's the entire face. So this is your base setting. So what you want to do is set the roughness, micro roughness scale for the entire face. And then you can tweak different values. I'm just going to set this to like a negative value of 0 0.15 here. And then we'll tweak all the other ones as well. Um, so edge roughness. Uh, we're not going to worry about the inner mouth right now. Let's take a look at uh, cheek and chin though. So cheek, uh, you can see which area the cheek modifies right there. Okay, very uh, easy to see which areas you can... Uh, modify uh, separately. Let's set the cheek value to something like uh, 0 0.2. Okay. And then the chin, chin roughness value. Again, uh, chin fairly easy, easy to see where that is on the on the character's chin there. Uh, we'll set this to a value of like uh, you know, 0 0.12 maybe. Okay. And there's also ear. I mean, you can even modify the ears uh, there as well. Um, if we enable ear roughness scale, you can see the result right there. Um, very uh, shiny as opposed to uh, very rough. And I'm going to set that value to, I don't know, let's set to 0 0.3 like that. We don't want to be, uh, you know, too shiny looking because um, it is in fact an ear, not a, a nose or something like that, a little bit oily, a little bit more oily. Um, the forehead is very noticeable as well. You can see here, if we modify the forehead, um, it's this entire area up there, okay? Um, and generally you don't want to have this too oily because it'll look a little bit different from the rest of the face. Um, the ideal scenario is to kind of try and blend these into each other and just uh, focus on different areas um, as you go along. And again, it really depends on the type of uh, look you're going for. Finally, let's just do the mouth and the nose here. Um, so the mouth roughness scale, if you take that down, you can see it's basically for the lips. You can have really glossy lips. If you take that value to like a negative value or take that further down, okay, we're just going to set this mouth uh, scale value to like 0 0.2, okay. Um, it's going to be pretty rough, um, smooth looking. And the nose, finally, uh, again, very noticeable. Um, the nose, you can see right there, the area that it is affecting. And uh, we'll take that value to something like 0 0.1, and we'll go from there. Okay, so in the next part of this tutorial, what we're going to do is we're going to focus on things like the eyes, the teeth, and the hair and stuff. And I'll show you how you can modify uh, those vari the various uh, material parameters and those to really tweak the appearance of your character's look. And uh, we'll go from there. All right. So hope to see you in the next video. And thanks for watching.